Good evening. Hope that everyone's doing well and that you are enjoying this wonderful weather on this uh, Wednesday of, this is October. It's not January, it's not February. It's October the 4th, and I'm once again having difficulties with my phone tonight, and I apologize. Um, don't know what the issue is, but anyway, um, we'll get it all straighted, straightened out at some point. Denise is not able to be with me tonight. We're just going to share a few thoughts with you tonight and, and uh, want to encourage you to be with us this coming Sunday, 10 o'clock at Infusion Church. Uh, Denise and I are gonna be sharing Israel. Uh, so you come and be with us if you can. Of course, our service will be on Facebook Live. It'll also be posted on YouTube a few minutes after service. But you're welcome to come and join with us and let's worship the Lord together and just, just share some, some wonderful truths about the Word of God. Um, I want to talk to you tonight or remind you of a couple of things. One is we started this year by talking about <laughs> by talking about um, attitude and by talking about attitude and the right attitude. We started that in January and 10 months into this year, uh, I just felt like we need to remind ourselves of what God's word talks to us about, about who we are, uh, about how we look at ourselves and our situations and our circumstances. We live in a crazy world. And there are a lot of crazy things going on. There are a lot of things going on even in our own government. Uh, and around the world just reminds me that we are living in the last days and that it is important that we understand that Jesus is coming and I believe soon. Uh, how soon? I don't know. He could come before we finish this tonight. He may not come for a hundred years, but in the scope of time, a hundred years is quickly. Uh, so, uh, I believe he's coming, and the world, I believe, is setting us up to that. We, as believers, have a responsibility to, to do what God's asked us to do and to walk in truths to this world and, and understand that even though we're believers, things happen. Even though we, we are uh, followers of Jesus, it does not make us immune to the things of life that happen. We have things that happen to us, uh, even though we are believers. And, and it is important, the attitude. Um, when, I, when I think about uh, life and, and I, I, you know, I think about people around us the right attitude is the understanding of how I react to what happens. It's not that um, what happens to me, but it's how I, I react to what is happening uh, in the good times and in the bad times. Uh, in the good times, not to get so puffed up that I feel like I'm invincible and that I can do everything or anything, and then in the difficult times to not feel like it's, oh, woe me. Why, why is all this happening to me? Paul said it to the Philippians when he talked about the fact that he had learned no matter where he was, no matter what state he found himself in, whether it was a time of difficulty or whether it was a time of, of tremendous blessing, that he he wanted to find himself content and and happy regardless of where that was. Uh, Philippians 4, 11 to 13 says, not that I speak in regard to need, 
For I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased. I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you see, to me, that verse is the key to to this life. The fact that we can do all things according through the strength that he has given to us. Uh, his grace, his mercy that enables us to, to go through difficult times. Uh, I can go through the valleys. I can go through the mount. I'm not going to get swept away on the mountaintop and I'm not going to get uh, swept away in the valleys because I've learned that no matter where I am, you know what? My hope, my trust is in the Lord and I'm believing him and I'm re uh, resting in him and I want him to be the very best in my life. I love the way the message puts that that those verses. He says, actually, I don't have a sense of needing anything personally. I've learned by now to be quite content whatever my circumstances. See, it's not just about money, but it's about whatever circumstances we have. I'm just as happy with little as with much with much as with little. I found the recipe for being happy, whether full or hungry, hands full or hands empty. Whatever I have, wherever I am, I can make it through anything in the one who makes me who I am. That's, that's the key. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that's the attitude. Of, of going through great times, of going through difficult times. And, and so many people get carried away in the great times and they, they, they get swept under the rug when things go, go bad or go wrong. And, and what's wrong with you? Why, why, why is this happening to you? Well, it's life. Life happens to everybody. And just because I'm a believer does not make me immune to the ebb and flow of life. Now, I believe in the blessings of the Lord. Yes, I believe he's more than able to keep and sustain us. Yes, that's not what I'm talking about. But the whole point of it is, is as human beings, just as G Jesus went through things on this earth, Jesus understands walking through this life can be a difficult walk. Uh, he had crowds that followed him. He had crowds that left him. He had those that were close to him that were true to him, that even denied him. He had those that were close to him that, that betrayed him and turned him over to his, his accusers. The, the whole point of what I'm trying to say is, look, I mentioned this verse uh, Sunday, casting all of our cares upon him because he cares for us. And Paul's talking about in order for us to keep the attitude of this life and to make it through the difficulties, to make it through the times that you and I may not understand and may see things differently, then it is time that we see and understand that God is more than able to keep us and to sustain us no matter where we are and what's going on. Hebrews 13, five and six says, don't love money, this is out of the New Living Translation. Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. So I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? The writer of Hebrews says, look, it's not wrapped up in the riches of this world. Because you can have all of the riches of this world and still lose and still uh, uh, feel washed away and swept away by the trials of this life. But it is the fact that the Lord is my helper. The Lord is my strength. My focus is on him. And the reality is God, my prayer, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God help us.
to be what he's wanting us to be and to help us to walk as he's calling us to walk in this hour, in this day. Romans 12, three says, for I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. And I'll tell you what jumps out at me at this in this verse, in the time in which I am in my life, is the fact that he says, through the grace given to me. The message puts it this way. He says, I'm speaking to you out of deep gratitude for all that God has given me, especially as I have responsibility in relation to you, living then as every one of you does in pure grace. Lord, this is a difficult hour. My grace is sufficient. Lord, I don't know what I'm gonna do. My grace is sufficient. It is that grace that has carried us and sustains us. He goes on in that verse in the message. He says, it is important that you not misinterpret yourselves as people who are bringing this goodness to God. No, God brings it to you. The only accurate way to understand ourselves is by what God is and by what God does for us, not by what we are or what we do for him. You see, I'm never gonna earn my way. I'm never gonna be able to pay him back for what he's done for me. He has given to me goodness beyond measure, goodness undeserved, goodness that I can't even begin to, to fathom or to put a hold on. And it is by what he's done for us, by what he's made available to us, by what he did on the cross. And that was from Romans chapter three, verse, I mean, chapter 12, verse three. And I read it both in the New King James and in the message. The message is the one that, that just breaks it out and makes us understand that, look, look, it's about God. It's about what he's wanting to do in our lives. It's about what he has done. You know, I am who I am today because he saved me. I am where I am today because he rescued me. It's not about Otis. I'm never gonna be able to work my way to him. I'm never gonna be able to be good enough for God. It is, I have no goodness. And that's what the Bible tells us repeatedly. We have no righteousness. If all of us were to put our righteousness together, it wouldn't amount to a pile of filthy rags. But he has been given, or he has given to us his righteousness, his goodness. He has made us right. We didn't make ourselves right. He made us right. And it is the attitude of walking through this life, of understanding that, you know what? Where I am and what has got me to this point in my life is the fact that God has brought me here. God has sustained me. He has kept me through the difficulties, through the hardships, through the ups, the downs, the victories, the failures. The one constant of my life is God. That's what it's all about. That's what he's wanting us to see. And the attitude that he's wanting us to bring into this world is not, look, I, I said this last weekend at the couples retreat. Too many people feel like the pastor's standing up here going, come on up here with me. I've already arrived. Come on up here. I, I know I, I've got it all. I'm No, but the reality is I'm with, we're all in this together. We're all struggling through this thing. We're all living life together. And it's all of us walking out 
our, our working out our salvation with fear and trembling. It is the reality of what God's wanting to do in all of us. So come on, let's do this together. Come on, let's walk this together. Let's be everything that God's wanting all of us to be. And I don't have any time to look down my nose at you or look down at this person because you know what? I am nothing without Jesus Christ. He's the constant in my life. He is the one that has sustained me and kept me. His grace has been sufficient for me, and especially in the last four years. I tell people all the time, and Denise and I have used it as an open door to minister to people who lose their children, who, who parents who have, have a child die. Look, this is, grief is a journey. And it's okay not to be okay. And the only thing that gets us through is the grace of God. His grace. Oh, that's what he said he would do. He would pour his grace on us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you've done in me, even when, even when I was not worthy and I'm still not, but even when I was a sinner, you loved me. Wow. You know, I think it would be easier for us to keep the right attitude if we kept the right attitude about God. And realizing it's him. It's not us. It's not Infusion Church. It's not the church down the street or across town or on another country. You know what? It's God. That's how when God blesses, we can rejoice with other people. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. When other people are hurting, we can mourn with them and cry with them. We suffer with them. We bear one another's burdens because you know what? It may be next week I need you to help me. It may be next week that I'm going through something that you're gonna have to help me with. That's the body of Christ and that's that's where it comes in, the reality of not thinking more. How, oh, I'm, I'm so, <clears throat> I am so, pious and I am so right, I don't have time to worry about these non-essential things. Let me tell you, every part of the body of Christ is essential. Every believer is important. We have been given this great gift he has imparted to us this glorious light that we're to share with this world. He's called us out of darkness into this marvelous light. We ought to show forth praises to him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, you know, Otis, I don't think you're doing it the way I think you ought to do it. Well, you know, I probably am not. Probably not. Probably very little of my life has been done the way other people think I ought to do it. What matters is, am I following the guidance of the Holy Spirit to the best of my ability? Not even following the dictates of my own heart because the Bible says that bound up in the heart of man is evil. It's not following myself. I want to hear the voice of the shepherd. I'm a sheep in his pasture and I want to follow the voice of the shepherd. And I want to be able to, when I go to bed at night, lay my head down and go to sleep knowing I've done it the best that I can do. Have I always, have I never made mistakes? No, I'm not saying that at all. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that's not an excuse for us to continue in sin. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying that I have no right to throw stones. 
I am not without sin. There are some people who feel like they are and they're perfect. But I'm sad to tell them that the only perfect person that's ever walked on the face of this earth, they nailed him to a cross and put him in a tomb and sealed it up. And three days later, he came out of that tomb victorious over death, hell, and the grave. Now that's the one I'm serving. That's the one I'm following. That's the one I want to be like. That's the one I want to pattern my life after. That's the one I want to trust. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you're doing in each and every one of us. As we go, and this is just the fourth day of October, and this is a spe this is a side note. It's a special day to Denise and I. Um, Forty-seven years ago today, uh, I gave her a diamond ring. Um, now I'd asked her previously. We were both in college, and I, I I didn't have a ring when I asked her. She said yes, and we. I said I'll, I'll be getting you a ring. Well, October the fourth. 1976, I gave her a ring and uh, that ring is still on her finger and it symbolizes the commitment that I made to her. And can I tell you something? A little over 47 years ago, I made a commitment to Jesus Christ and he put a new ring on my finger and he put new shoes on my feet and he put a new robe on me and he opened up a new path for my life. And that's exactly what he did when you gave your heart to him. You're his, you're his, you're his. It's not by what you did. We were in the pig pen and it was the goodness of the father <laughs> who welcomed us with open arms the son who sacrificed himself that we might have life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. When I stop and think of that, that's a commitment I want to keep Because I want to enter into his presence. Not by the skin of my teeth. Not just barely making it. I want to enter into his presence. And hear those words. Well done. Thy good and faithful servant. That's my goal. That should be your goal. And I want the attitude that Lord no matter what I'm going through. Give me the attitude that says, even if God slays me, I'm still going to trust him. Even if everything turns upside down, I'm still going to trust the Lord. I'm not giving up. I'm not quitting. I'm not throwing in the towel. I will not stop because I look at the goodness of God and I see what he's given to me in this new life and this light that he has shown forth in me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace. I thank you for this opportunity to come together. And Lord, I pray that you would move and minister to our hearts and to our minds, to our lives. Lord, your will be done in each of us. Remind us of what you've done. Remind us of the goodness of God. Remind us of the grace that has been poured in our lives that has brought us to this point in life, even through the difficulties and through the trials and the troubles, through the fires and through the floods and through the mountaintops as well. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Help me to keep that attitude of gratitude. Remembering it's about you. It's not me. It's you. 
God, have your way in each of our hearts, each of our lives. I pray, Lord, that you would move and minister. Touch Ms. Esther. Feel that room where she is. May she sense your power and presence and the glory of the Lord. Lord, we pray for Edward, that you touch him and minister healing in him, Lord, I pray. Thank you, Lord, for Susan Windsor. We're believing you to touch her eyes. I pray, God, that you would move and minister. I know what they're telling her in a couple of months. And Lord, I just pray that you would touch her and bring complete and total healing in her. For Sheila, Lord, I pray that you would undergird her and hold her in your hand and in your care and just renew her and refresh her in your spirit. For Augusta, minister healing in her body. Thank you, Lord, for what you're gonna do. For Don Slayton, touch him and minister, bring healing, Lord, I pray. For Paula and all of her family, Lord, move and minister, bring comfort, breathe into their lives and may your grace be poured into them in this hour and in this day. God, for Linda Swain, we're believing you for healing. We pray that you would touch her, minister to her husband, Barry, and, and Lord, that you would encourage and that you would just minister to both of them in this hour. We thank you. We thank you and we give you praise. God, have your way in us. And Lord, we pray for all of Infusion family, for wherever they may be, Lord, that you would move and minister and touch open doors. Minister mightily, Lord. God, I pray for our service Sunday as we gather together. We give you praise. We give you glory. Have your way. Open your word to us. Share your hope, your peace, your trust. We thank you for what you're going to do. Your will be accomplished in everything we pray and we believe. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys for joining with us tonight. Hopefully, next Wednesday night, I won't have the debacle at the beginning with my phone going all crazy and uh, won't rotate and won't flip and different stuff. And anyway, um, thank you for staying past that um, disruption and not getting distracted. Thank you. Um, uh, continued prayers. Uh, for God's will to be accomplished in everything. Continue to support the church, Infusion Church. Uh, you can go to in, infusionchurchnc.com. You can go to our giving page and give through Easy Tithe. You can text give or you can mail it to Infusion Church, P.O. Box 14281, Archdale, North Carolina, 27263. Or you can bring it with you Sunday and let's worship the Lord together. May the Lord bless you, keep you, hold you in his hand and help us to have the right attitude as we go through this trying world in which we live. May his light shine forth through us. Lord bless you, be blessed, enjoy. Enjoy the weather as it's beginning to break into fall and enjoy the cooler temperatures I am. Lord bless you. We will see you Sunday.